Welcome to the Live Leadership Podcast with myself, Leela Singh. All things coaching, career and personal branding. This podcast is for ambitious career professionals like you, wanting to create a life of choice and freedom, to be, do and have more through overcoming limitations, to develop new perspectives and insights and to redefine your success, be that in work, health, relationships, and so much more. Hi there, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are joining from in the world today, and welcome to Live with Leela. My name is Leela Singh, and I'm a leadership and career coach, and my mission is to impact 100,000 people's career trajectory beyond what they thought possible. Why? Because I am passionate about helping you to realise what is truly possible for you in your career and in your life. And how do I do that? Through harnessing your leadership potential. I coach high achieving, ambitious and driven mid to senior level professionals, typically working in the technology industry for promotion, for peak performance and a standout personal brand, all whilst showing up as the best version of yourself, which is what I call life leadership. So I want to kick off with today's topic, and it's all about mastering self-belief. Why? Because this is the path to leadership success, is having that belief in yourself. And, you know, often we hear the term self-belief bandied around as a bit of a buzzword, and it's actually more important than being a buzzword. It's the foundational block of your professional and your personal life. As a seasoned leadership and career coach, my focus is on coaching and empowering mid to senior level professionals who want to harness their inner confidence and their self-belief because this not only propels them forward in their career, but also enables you as an individual to step into an impactful leadership position. So today I want to explore the essence of self-belief. What is it? Why is it important? The advantages of developing it and some practical steps to cultivate it. So let's start with the definition. What is self-belief? It's Self-belief is about trusting in your, your abilities, in being able to make informed decisions and being able to steer your career with conviction. When you believe in yourself, it's evident. It comes across to other people and other people's perception of you. In other words, your words, your behaviours, your actions all reflect confidence and inspire the people around you. So why prioritise this as something to work on, to develop and to, to home? Because it's a proven predictor of success. When we believe in our abilities, in the value that we have to bring to the table, we have the belief in ourselves, then we show up differently. We act differently. And that directly reflects in our outcomes, our, our results and our experiences. It also reflects in the way that other people perceive us. And when we talk about having a high level of confidence, self-confidence, it isn't just about feeling good, it also translates into tangible benefits. For example, it enhances your, your health and helps you to manage your stress. It improves your work-life balance and your quality of your relationships. It elevates your performance in the workplace as well as consequently your recognition. And conversely, that lack of self-belief and not having faith in what you bring to the table in your value and the belief in yourself that can lead to missed opportunities not grabbing those opportunities that are placed before you because you don't have that belief that you can do it or the confidence in yourself it can also cause a strain on relationships and result in unfilled potential so 
there's a number of benefits, of course, to developing your belief and your confidence in yourself. And I talk about, for example, your presence, managing your state. And I'll be sharing more about this in depth on next week's live. Today, I just want to focus on some of, first of all, ways of overcoming your beliefs that are limiting you, that are hindering you and holding you back. Why? Because our limiting beliefs, they're like almost invisible shackles around our ankles. They're stopping us from being able to move forward. And where do they come from? Well, they stem from our language, our thoughts, and often we use them to categorize our capabilities and limit our potential. So by identifying and challenging those self-imposed limitations, those barriers that we've placed on ourselves, you can unlock a new realm of possibilities. How do we do that? I want to share a little bit of that with you today. For example, the one thing that I hear myself talking about all the time, particularly when I'm coaching my clients, is self-awareness. So really harnessing your self-awareness. What does that look like? It's starting to hold that mirror up and looking at how you show up, looking at how you behave, the way that you react to situations, the inner self-talk. So if we break that down for a moment, first of all, reflection, if we look at reflection, things like at the end of each day or the end of each week, reflecting on what went well, what are your wins, what are your accomplishments, why, why is this important? Because naturally, we tend to focus on what went wrong, what didn't work, where what we haven't achieved, where we're not at yet. And we fail to recognize and to notice what did go well, what our wins have been, however small they might be, and those accomplishments. And by the way, this is something I always invite my clients to do is to spend time writing down their accomplishments to date, both personally and professionally. And that's an ongoing document. It's not a one-off exercise because there'll always be new wins to add to that. But the power in actually writing down and looking and seeing how much you have achieved and how far you have come in your life. And as I said, it's, this is both personal and professional, will instill you with belief and confidence that you are capable, you, you can do more, you can achieve more. And that's why the reflection is so important. Otherwise, what we end up doing is we just keep doing, doing and moving forward, but not really slowing down and stopping to recognize how far we've come and what we are accomplishing along the way. So reflection is key to self-awareness. It's also a way of seeking evidence. So seeking evidence for your brain to recognize and to support you in that belief that yes, you have so much value to bring to the world, that you are great at what you do. You have got incredible skills and abilities that will enable you to achieve even more. Another way of reflecting is also through seeking feedback. Now, obviously be mindful of who you seek feedback from. I would invite you to consider people who have your interests at heart, who you trust and you value their opinion. And also they're people who recognize your ambition, your drive and where you want to get to, because they will be a little more perhaps critical, but constructively so. And seeking feedback from people, for example, on a piece of work or a project that you, you've produced or completed. Maybe it's a, a presentation that you've delivered. You know, it could be you ran a meeting and you want feedback on how you felt that went. So whatever it might be. If you can seek some feedback as well, that helps alongside the evidence that you can seek yourself to help to support and validate those beliefs that you are honing and that you are developing as to actually how good you are. And the feedback is also important from the perspective that we always, we tend to be more self-critical. We will see ourselves from a, a certain perspective and actually other people are typically kinder and will see our accomplishments far more easily and quicker than we will. And that is why it's good to have people around you that you can reach out to and ask for their input on this. 
Another thing is, again, regarding self-awareness is slowing down to your inner dialogue, your inner self-talk and notice the way that you talk to yourself. Why? Because as well as being self-critical or over-critical, we also tend to lack that compassion and that kindness for ourselves. And if you slow down to start noticing how you talk to yourself and how much you beat yourself up, ask yourself the question, is this the way that I would speak to a young child? Often the answer will be no. Why? Because when we speak to children, we speak to them from a place of kindness, of compassion, of encouragement and of love. And yet we often fail to do this to ourselves. So again, self-awareness is recognizing how you speak to yourself, also how you speak about yourself to others. Remember, both of these are important because how you speak about yourself to others is projecting what's going on internally for you outwardly to others. And now often it's the case that people will see past that. But if you're looking at new relationships and forming a good impression, particularly in the workplace, then you want to be mindful of how you are speaking about yourself. Are you putting yourself down? Are you being overly apologetic? Are you um, undermining yourself in the way that you're showing up and the way that you're speaking about yourself? Also remember to be mindful of how, oh, oh, sorry, of what you focus on. So are you focusing at all times on the things that haven't gone well, the things that maybe didn't work today or um, what, what you haven't yet done and um, having no line of sight of the things that you have done, the things that you have accomplished, things that are, are wins for today. And this is where the reflection comes in. So being mindful as well, what are you focusing on? You can shift your focus once you're aware of what you're doing. And this is where, again, having that level of awareness of what you do tend to focus on allows you to now make a different choice. What can I focus on instead? So think about the questions that you can ask yourself. As I mentioned earlier, managing your state, so managing yourself from within and how you're showing up is really important. I am not an advocate of uh, fake it till you make it. I believe that you can actually feel more confident very quickly simply by managing your state. That's not something I'm going to talk about today. We're going to talk about it in next week's live. Um, but there are previous um, podcast episodes that I've shared about developing your presence and leveraging your nonverbal cues so that you feel confident from within. Not only that, but other people will perceive you as confident, as credible, as an authority. And they're more likely to gravitate towards you, to want to be in your space, to perhaps work with you, to hire you and so forth. So all of these things build your self-belief. Right now, what I want you to focus on is the reflection time and looking at wins, accomplishments, seeking evidence both within yourself and also from those around you. Slowing down to recognise your inner self-talk. How Ask yourself, how can you shift your narrative about yourself and it's not about making stuff up but it's recognizing your value recognizing what you bring to the table recognizing your skills your attributes your uniqueness because those are things that will help you to stand out from the crowd in a really competitive market also something that i found incredibly powerful is recognizing that building that confidence that self-belief it's not necessarily a place to get to. If you slow down for a moment and consider this, coming from that place of confidence, of having self-belief, will immediately shift your behaviours, your communication, the way that you carry yourself, the way that you show up, your actions, your behaviours, and ultimately your results, your outcomes, and the impression that you create for people around you. So slowing down to recognize that actually if I come from a place of confidence in myself, in my abilities, in what I have to bring to the world, I will show up differently and really start to live into that. You will start to notice a difference immediately in how you both feel and how you behave. So what are the rewards for cultivating the self-belief? Many. 
it's not just about self-improvement. This is about investing in your future, particularly in your professional career. And it enhances your influence. As I said, it, it you show it with more credibility, authority, and also your presence, having that gravitas. Because remember, you you have heard me say this often if you if you've listened to my lives or checked out my podcast before, I talk about this all the time. A first impression is formed within the first seven seconds. So would it not make sense to enable or influence that impression to the best of your ability? And actually, that impression is often formed before you've even uttered a word. So your presence, your gravitas, the way that you carry yourself when you walk into a room, when you shop for an interview, all of those things will make a difference to how people perceive you. So coming from that place of confidence, of belief in yourself, when you walk into a room, when you attend a networking event, for example, or when you're um, standing up and sharing information, presenting in a meeting, will make that difference to how people perceive you and your ability to influence the people around you. It also enhances the perceived value that you have to bring to the table. And it enables you, therefore, to contribute to a more fulfilling and successful career. So there's a raft of benefits here on really honing and developing your self-belief, working on your confidence. So what are some of the characteristics of really of people who are really self-confident, who, who show up um, as that person who's got absolute belief and conviction in themselves? It's, first of all, recognising that self-confidence is actually um, having convictions in your ability and standing by your own convictions of yourself and what you're capable of. It's also about embracing risks. Often the people who are more confident, who have that belief in themselves, are more likely to take risks. For example, I talk to a lot of people day in and day out, and there are many people when they lack confidence, they're less likely to want to experience change they might stay in the same role for months even years completely unhappy unfulfilled even depressed because they're lacking that belief and confidence in themselves that they can move to somewhere else to a new role to a new organization and be good at what they do perhaps because they've been in the same place for so long and that's where we start to limit ourselves and all of this comes from within and it's something that we can start to shift internally very very quickly so thinking about embracing risks however big or small they are you might be thinking well changing job isn't a risk and for some it isn't for me it isn't for others it can be and that's where it's the level of risk that you're prepared to take will increase with your levels of confidence also you get to learn from your failures the things that don't work that's what failure is it's about a learning exercise it's not about giving up because something didn't work out the way you'd hoped. It's about having a level of confidence to learn from it and go, you know, approach something in a different way, taking on the lessons that you've learned from what didn't work the first time. And also when you do well, when you achieve those accomplishments and those wins and the accolades to accept them with humility, all of that, all of these things I've shared are traits of someone who is self-confident. And they are essential when it comes to being an effective leader. You want to be that leader who is confident in both yourself and your abilities and the ability to lead the people around you. And often you'll see leaders who are incredibly insecure, who are lacking the confidence in themselves, their abilities, their knowledge and their skills. This will translate into um, potentially toxic behaviour at its worst. Um, it's when people will hire people who aren't necessarily better than them because they have that fear that they will be um, caught out or, um, you know, somebody might realise they're not as good as they have sold themselves out, perhaps because they've got someone who's smarter than them in the room. Someone who's confident will hire great people around them because they have that certainty within themselves. They don't feel threatened. They don't feel intimidated. They're OK with having people of high calibre around them because they want to learn and to grow as well. And they know having a good team will help them as a leader to move forward too. So there's always that distinction. And when you see people who are in leadership positions and 
art come in place from a place of um let's say lacking confidence in themselves or in their abilities and insecurities start to show up that is the reason why so ultimately if you are somebody who is aiming towards leadership or striving towards leadership and looking to advance your career and securing that next promotion cultivating your self-belief is not an option it is essential sorry it's not optional shall i say it's essential to be able to move forward even quicker and it is the key as i said to unlocking that potential that you have within you as well as the ability to influence others whether it's at interview stage or within the workplace having people want to hear what you have to say and value your opinions and of course it enables you to achieve that success that you are striving for and that you so deserve and you work so hard for so i invite you to really work on fostering that sense of self-confidence that belief in yourself that belief in your abilities to start to recognize when you're undermining yourself when you're putting yourself down because when you do that people are hearing they're observing what you're doing and even if they have that faith in you they may start to question if you keep undermining yourself and this isn't just about elevating your career this is also about sh you shaping the future of your leadership and i would love to know your biggest takeaway from what i have shared here today and also where you see that you can start to work on developing your belief in yourself even further to propel yourself forward in your career okay until next time remember to harness your potential elevate your performance and strive towards growth by pursuing that next opportunity that next promotion whatever it is for you by showing up as the best version of you Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already done so. And if you enjoyed and gained value from today's episode, then do please leave a review telling us your key learnings and what you enjoyed the most. And do please share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can spread the word on life leadership, creating a life of choice, freedom and new possibilities. Connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And if you would like to learn more about how we can work together, either DM me on LinkedIn or email me. All details and resources can be found in the show notes.